Hello everybody, today we're going to talk about snapping out a part in one five axis operation while still achieving a machine finished surface on every single side of the part. Obviously the traditional way to snap a part out is to use tags. The issue with tags is that you often have to end up hand finishing the face that you've held on. If you would like to learn how to snap a part out without having to do any hand finishing, watch this upcoming video. Right, okay, snapping out a part in one operation. So here you can see my setup with Infusion. The first thing I'm going to do is create a snap out model and some avoidance geometry. So here's my snap out model in blue, and here's my avoidance geometry. The snap out model goes into the Fusion setup. So if I open up my Fusion setup and look at my model, you'll see that I've got two bodies selected. So I've got my part model and I've got my snap out model. The avoidance geometry goes into my cam assist setup. So, as you can see, here I've got avoidance geometry and I've got my red model selected. So the basic principle of what's going on here, cam assist is gonna generate its toolpath to the part model, the snap out model, and the avoidance geometry. That's gonna leave the program 80 to 90% complete and all the user has to do at the end is go in and manually add some strategies to snap the part out. So if we take a look here, this is the last strategy generated by Cam Assist. That leaves us with a part complete, but still rigid enough not to vibrate and shatter. So to achieve that, that's where we use the avoidance geometry to basically blank off this backside. What I do then is come in and I add the manual snap out strategies. So let's take a closer look at the design of the snap out model. So first things to remember with this style of snap out, you're gonna need a part that's got a flat face, a straight edge, and obviously no holes or features in the back face because you won't be able to get to them. In terms of the geometry of the snap out model, what you're gonna to have to do is create these small tabs. Now the rule of thumb for aluminium is 0.25 onto the part with a 0.5 gap. So in terms of the spacing, I've gone for a tab that's about 12 mil wide with a 40 mil gap in between them. So basically I'm using the principle of smaller tabs with more of them. You could also make the tabs wider and have less of them. It doesn't really matter too much. It's just a case of using your best experience and judgment to try and work out what's gonna hold the part the best. Now, when it comes to creating the tabs, what you need is a radius. Now this radius is dictated by the size of the cutter that you want to use. So as you can see, I've got a 9mm radius, which is going to allow me up to an 18mm cutter to finish that back face. Now the opposite side, you're going to create a channel. So my channel is 11mm wide, which is going to allow me to use up to a 10mm cutter. So it's important to make that channel wide enough for the size of the cutter that you want to use. Now, as you can see here, I've got an angled face. The reason I do this is purely if I want to rough the back pocket out using a 3D strategy. With this angled face, it's gonna create more clearance for the tool holder. So let's take a look at the machining strategy used to snap this part out. So to snap this part out, I'm gonna use a combination of five 2D strategies. So the first step is to bring out my roughing tool, running at my usual roughing parameters. I'm going to take three passes, leaving 0.3 on the side face. So with that complete, I'm going to leave a thickness of 10 mil at the bottom. This is going to allow the part to still be nice and rigid at this point. The second step is to bring out my finishing tool and I'm going to wall finish that section of the face. I'm not going to worry about smaller step downs or anything because the part is still rigid. It is important to remember that your roughing tool should go a little bit lower than your finishing tool so that the finishing tool isn't wall finishing and floor finishing at the same time because that will um, result in chow. So the third step is to bring out my chamfering tool. That's now gonna deburr that edge where the part is still rigid. The fourth step, I'm gonna bring out my roughing tool and this is where the part is gonna to begin to lose its rigidity. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it from a thickness of 10 mil down to two, but I'm gonna do that in reduced step downs. So I think here I'm taking about two mil step downs. So now I've got that thickness down to two mil. The next step is to bring out my finishing tool. So this is the last strategy that's gonna snap the part out. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change over from wall finishing to floor finishing parameters. So I'm going to run the spindle blower, which is going to help um, avoid the chatter. But also, if you look, I am going to be floor finishing with it. So that final two mil, what I'm going to do is break up the step down into 0.25 millimeters. So it's just taking, into, taking down a small level in every step, gradually snapping the part out. Now what's critical to remember is that you only want to break through once. So when you divide your step downs, it's important that the tool only breaks past the bottom edge of the part once. Once you've created this snap out, you don't want to take another pass because at that point it's totally lost its rigidity and if taken another pass will cause it to chatter. So with that complete, I've now got a part that's held only on these small tabs, which is 0.25 onto the part, and I have a completely machine finished back edge. It's also important to remember that you must use a sharp end mill when finishing this back face and finishing this tab profile. If you use a cutter with a small radius, it will obviously form a full radius each side of the tab. That will make the part too difficult to snap out. So that's how you snap out a part, avoiding any hand polishing. So let's talk a little bit about the benefits to snapping out a part in one operation. So the first main one is it's going to reduce your setup time. The second one is that it's going to reduce the risk of setting your datums wrong. So uh, what I mean by that is setting your op two side wrong to your op one. Now the most important one is that as long as your machine kinematics are good, all your features are going to come out relative to each other because it's all been done in the same operation. So with this part in particular, I've utilized my standard work holding my standard tooling, I've loaded the part model into Fusion, I've created some avoidance geometry, and then I've run this part through Cam Assist. Cam Assist on this one part has saved me at least four hours programming time. 